right, welcome back. We are on part number four now of Microsoft's and Xbox's response to the CMA's remedies notice. And this part is about cloud gaming and significant lessening of competition within cloud gaming. That's what SLC stands for again, significant lessen lessening of competition. You'll hear that throughout this part. So we'll start here, 4.1. In this section, Microsoft sets out why a content licensing remedy is the most proportionate and effective remedy available should the CMA maintain the cloud gaming SLC in its final report. Specifically, this section outlines Microsoft's proposed content licensing remedy and explains why Microsoft's proposed content licensing remedy effectively addresses the cloud gaming SLC and explains why Microsoft's proposed content licensing remedy will preserve and enhance RCBs. Microsoft submits that for the reason set out below, its proposed remedy will not give rise to specification, circumvention, distortion, and monitor or monitoring and enforcement risks. And again, I always just like to clarify because you never know if this may be the your first time tuning into my channel, going through this document, but RCBs, it was outlined up here what it means and it means relevant customer benefits so if you hear rcbs as we go through this it means relevant customer benefits all right part a here microsoft's proposed licensing remedy activision games are not currently available on any cloud gaming service the cma provisionally considers that in the counterfactual at least some cloud gaming providers especially those with a buy to play or b2p or bring your own game BYOG offering would have Activision's most valuable games available in their platforms on the date of their release in the next five years. In particular, the CMA provisionally considers it likely in particular that Activision would, and there's a redacted section, in the near future absent of the merger, the CMA provisionally considers that the availability of Activision content, in particular Call of Duty and World of Warcraft, would be a, a particularly important input to cloud gaming services. And yeah, of course, I mean, both those games would be huge. World of Warcraft would be a, a great game to add to cloud gaming just because I think it, it would run well and you'd be able to jump in and just do a couple of things here and there. You don't need the graphical prowess of a big console uh, for it to look really good and stuff like that. So I think it would just be a game that just runs and plays pretty easily in cloud gaming. And maybe they add in some touch controls and, you know, you hitting the, the little buttons at the bottom, the little attacks at the bottom, the actions just by tapping it. So I think that type of stuff would be great in cloud gaming. And of course, Call of Duty as well. The thing with Call of Duty is it's a first person shooter. So Within cloud gaming, if you're playing multiplayer, a lot of people are just not going to play this multiplayer if there's any latency at all. And that's one of the things with FPS is maybe you can play through the campaign if it runs decently, but you're sitting down, you're playing a multiplayer match of Call of Duty, you're probably not going to be wanting to play that through, through cloud gaming. Even Call of Duty Mobile, you download that game natively, and that game has been doing extremely, extremely well. 4.4, to resolve the cloud gaming SLC, Microsoft will commit to license Activision games, including COD and WoW, to cloud gaming providers with a buy to play or a BYOG offering for a period of 10 years. So again, we talked about this in the last video and they're doing the same thing with WoW, apparently that they will be offering Call of Duty and World of Warcraft to, uh, with a license agreement to PlayStation and PlayStation Plus. And we don't know what the deals of that licensing agreement would be, we have heard from Sony that the licensing deal just wouldn't work because it would they would it would ruin their business. It would be too much money spent, I guess, that they wouldn't be making enough on revenue that it would just ruin their entire business. If if you go through my video, it's an hour long or about 55 minute long video. I go through the entire response of Sony's response to these CMA remedies and one of the main things that they argue is that with this deal going through without Call of Duty, they will not be able to have a business. They will not be able to run PlayStation Plus and everything is going to crumble. They're essentially saying that Call of Duty is the pillar of their entire PlayStation organization, their entire PlayStation business, or at least that's what it sounds like from, from what I read when I read through the document. And they specifically mention that they will not be able to run PlayStation Plus if they lose, if they lose Call of Duty or even if the deal goes through because of the terms, I guess, of the deal that would be offered to them with this cloud gaming offer of 10 years. So I'm not sure. We don't know those terms. It would be That will be interesting. If maybe this goes to court in the FTC, maybe we'll see some of that stuff come out. 
A summary of the key elements of the proposed licensing remedy is provided below. Scope. The remedy will apply to the Activision titles for PC and associated content listed in the appendix below, including all past, current, and future releases of such titles available on PC, the PC games. Term. The remedy will apply for a period of 10 years. Consumer license. Microsoft will unilaterally grant a license to any consumer who has purchased or obtained a free license to play a PC game from an authorized third-party PC digital storefront. Eligible game. To stream the game using a generally recognized PC consumer cloud gaming provider to a device that they own. Microsoft will grant the consumer license by publishing it on Microsoft's website, and the consumer license will be granted for the term. So I guess no matter where you purchase certain PC games via whatever third-party PC digital storefront to stream these games using a generally recognized PC consumer cloud gaming provider, Microsoft is going to be providing a license. So I guess it's not just going to be GeForce now if you previously made purchases of these Activision Blizzard games. So whatever other third-party streaming services that are out there on PC, you're going to get a license even if this deal goes through from what that sounds like. D, eligible provider license. Microsoft will grant a license to stream eligible games to PC cloud gaming providers with a buy to play or a bring your own game business model. The eligible provider license. To qualify as an eligible provider, a PC cloud gaming provider must be a generally recognized consumer PC cloud gaming provider that meets the following criteria. And that criteria has been redacted, unfortunately. And it must comply with applicable data protection legislation and commonly used security standards aimed at protecting gamers and games to ensure necessary and sufficient protection of all consumers' accounts used to stream the eligible game. So these two sections here just sounds like they are going to be providing licenses for people who have already bought these games and wanting to use them on a streaming service to be able to actually go ahead and use and play the games that, that they currently own. They will be giving those licenses out. Pricing. The consumer license and the eligible provider license will be redacted. We don't know. Release date parity. And then again, redacted, but the release date parity will be the same. The remedy will provide eligible providers release date parity with buy to play on PC. So no matter where you're playing Call of Duty, Activision Blizzard games, whether it's through cloud gaming, whether it's through buy to play, downloading it, the release dates will be the same across all of these games. Authorized PC digital storefront. An authorized PC digital storefront is any third party PC digital storefront to which Microsoft decides to distribute eligible games post-transaction. Microsoft commits to distribute eligible games post-transaction to at least one third-party PC digital storefront for the term. Okay, so they, they are committing to distributing eligible games post-transaction to at least one third-party PC digital storefront. So we don't know which ones, but per for the term of these contracts, at least one of them will be be distributed on. Licenses will be subject to the following limitations with regard to eligible games. The provider will be responsible to adjust its service to the extent necessary to allow for consumers to stream eligible games. Microsoft does not expect that any technical adaptations will be needed to be made to eligible games to enable streaming on the provider's services. So they're saying, hey, if you have streaming services, you have that available to consumers, we're going to give you the games. We're not really not going to have to make any changes to our games, but you are going to be the ones that have to go out and make those necessary changes to your services. Now, this is where things get interesting because obviously this was uh, something that CMA has talked about and something that Sony mentioned in their, their response was that creating cloud gaming services is extremely difficult right now. It's very expensive. It's a nascent market. It takes a long time to grow it. 10 years may not even be enough for that to happen. And Microsoft here is saying, hey, if you don't have cloud gaming, you have to make those adjustments, which obviously it's not, Microsoft's not going to go out and build cloud gaming services for everybody. That's where they're going to dominate. And they're dominating because they've done it better than anybody in gaming. Without a shadow of a doubt, Xbox Cloud Gaming and Game Pass are the best services out there compared to anything else. And that's just because they have great infrastructure and they've built up to it since 2017, since the launch, and nobody's been able to compete with it. I mean, Google tried. Google Stata tried to create a cloud gaming service with subscription model, and they had in there where you actually have to go buy games as well, but they just couldn't do it. They didn't have the value that Game Pass has. And you can't you can't convince me that it's because the Xbox and Microsoft have such a dominant uh, place in cloud gaming that nobody else is able to compete. Google is a huge company, just almost as powerful as Microsoft, and 
they should have more than enough infrastructure and money and know-how and resources to be able to compete something that competes closely with Game Pass. They just didn't do it as good. And consumers spoke, they shut down Google Stadia. It will be providers, it will be the provider's sole responsibility to secure potential third-party IP rights necessary to stream eligible games, example, music, voice talent. This is in line with market practice as cloud game streaming providers currently need to separately obtain a license for third-party IP rights to stream games. Very normal stuff there, you would think. 4.6. Microsoft's remedy will include the following mechanisms for monitoring compliance and dispute resolution. Again, this was talked about in the previous video. This is the same thing that they put in there with the consumer benefit side of things, which is having a monitoring trustee that will be appointed to monitor this deal, make sure things are being enforced, and they have to report to the CMA and agree upon the terms with the CMA. And then there's going to be a dispute resolution mechani mechanism which they are going to solve disputes in a timely manner. So it's a fast track dispute resolution to an independent adjudicator. The identity of the adjudicator will be agreed with the CMA. The adjudicator will be remunerated by Microsoft. So again, they are on board with having third parties look at this deal, make sure that they are being enforced. Microsoft's proposed remedy addresses the cloud gaming SLC and the CMA's concern in the remedies notice. The cloud gaming SLC or significant lessening of competition is based on the CMA's concerns that Microsoft could for bring your own game or buy your own game. I'm just going to confirm what that is because I'm saying bring your own game, but it could be buy your own game. So yes, bring your own game, refuse to license Call of Duty to cloud gaming services, make it exclusive to Xbox Cloud Gaming, or make Call of Duty available for release on cloud gaming services at a later date compared to Xbox example, timed exclusivity, which above they said they weren't going to be doing that. So they're just restating what concerns the CMA has. 4.8, the proposed licensing remedy fully addresses each of these concerns. In particular, the PC games will not be exclusive to Xbox cloud gaming. If you needed any clearer than that, now you know. PC games with this deal are not exclusive to Xbox cloud gaming. And we, I mean, we already knew that after they made the NVIDIA GeForce Now deal because 10 years, the games coming from Xbox onto PC, into their cloud gaming is going to go over to that service as well. As a result, the proposed remedy of the proposed remedy, the PC games will be made available to other cloud gaming providers. Microsoft's proposed licensing remedy goes beyond what would occur even if a quote non the CMA's counterfactual were to materialize absent the transaction. In particular, even if absent the merger and despite ample evidence to the contrary, Act version were to redacted, its games would again redacted. So they're just pointing out stuff that potentially could happen without the merger, but they would still keep their games on other cloud streaming services. Microsoft's commitments go significantly beyond this counterfactual and enable any eligible provider to stream to the PC games. The PC games will be available to stream on rival cloud gaming services. And this, I, it's not surprising that they would want to do this. I mean, everybody playing these cloud gaming services probably are using a Windows PC. It's in the best interest of Microsoft to make sure that no matter where people are, whether they're signed up to Game Pass or not, that they're still looking at games coming to Xbox Game Pass, especially when they're playing it on PC is may entice people to go and subscribe to PC Game Pass and to spend money within their own ecosystem already because they are using Windows and they are using a PC. So, I mean, you might as well just give it to everybody, even if they're using a different third-party app to stream the games. The PC games will not be timed exclusive to Xbox Cloud Gaming. As a result of the proposed remedy, the PC games will be made available to other cloud gaming providers at the same time as a release for sale on PC. Now, this is great for a couple of reasons because we've heard this multiple times that they do not care about timed exclusivity. And I just, I hate timed exclusivity. And to hear that Xbox is going to make sure that none of that stuff is happening with these games. I'm all for, because we see it so much right now with PlayStation side of their deals. It's all timed exclusivity. And it's just so people can't access these games for a year, six months or whatever on different platforms. So people go out and impulse buy that game for PlayStation because they don't want to wait to play it. And obviously it works because they continuously do it. 4.9. In addition, Microsoft submits that the proposed remedy gives to no specification, circumvention, distortion, or monitoring enforcement risks. In particular, specification, 
The structure of the proposed licensing remedy is based on industry practice commonly used by publishers, whereby licenses are granted to each consumer and cloud game streaming provider on PC, including the NVIDIA agreement. The remedy is simple, clear, and does not require complex implementation or technical adaptation or any significant monitoring or supervision. Circumvention, Microsoft currently distributes the PC games through a number of third-party PC digital storefronts. Microsoft will commit to distribute eligible games through at least one third-party PC digital storefront throughout the term of the remedy. So I guess there's it's Steam, right? That's the PC digital storefront third party one that they distribute all of their games. And that's, I'm assuming what they are, who are they, they are referring to. They're going to be keeping all the games within steam. So, and they haven't officially signed the deal with valve because game Newell said that he doesn't care about signing a deal. He trusts Xbox, trusts Microsoft when it comes to their word and, and saying that they're going to bring their games to the platform. And here, I guess they're just saying that because they haven't specifically signed that deal. This eliminates any hypothetical risk of circumvention of the remedy by ensuring that Microsoft distributes eligible games outside its own and operated PC digital storefronts post-merger. In addition, Microsoft commits to make eligible games available. Distortion. Microsoft's proposed remedy does not give rise to any risk of market distortion. It will remain in place for a targeted period and is based on existing market-based terms commonly used by publishers. Bring Your Own Game is the most successful business model on cloud gaming with a number of providers, including NVIDIA, GeForce Now, and Shadow. The bring-your-own-game business model has the lowest barrier to entry, allowing gamers to stream games they already own. Cloud providers do not require an, exist an extensive catalog of content to launch, but many cloud providers offer a range of different payment options, and, and as the CMA has noted, are open to different ways of monetizing their services. The proposed remedy also addresses the buy-to-play business model to avoid distortion, Monitoring and enforcement. Microsoft's proposed cloud gaming remedy is self-executing and its implementation does not require significant monitoring or supervision. Nonetheless, Microsoft has included specific mechanisms to allow for monitoring and dispute resolution. The eligible providers will have all the experience and information they need to request a license, detect potential breaches of Microsoft's obligations, and bring a dispute before the adjudicator. So they're saying we're making it easy for everybody to get in on this deal the terms aren't going to be crazy there you're going to be able to request a license and you'll be e easily able to see if we aren't living up to our side of the the agreement of to the to the term and bringing that information to an adjudicator who will then rule on that based on the cma based on the, the what the cma has come to the agreement that they have enforced here with these remedies and of course within the 10-year deals and, and any other deals that microsoft makes for all of these games Microsoft will periodically provide the monitoring trustee with the information required to certify compliance with the remedy. Monitoring and enforcement costs should be modest due to simplicity of the remedy and its transparency to customers. C, the proposed remedy is proportionate to the cloud gaming SLC and will preserve and enhance RCBs. Microsoft's proposed remedy to proportionate to the cloud gaming SLC and will preserve and enhance RCBs outlined above. The cloud gaming market is de minimis and will remain so as explained above cloud gaming on pc is de minimis now de minimis means of little importance so i don't know maybe it's little importance now because it's tiny compared to the other markets but it will become bigger i believe so they're kind of downplaying there the importance of cloud gaming in this section Around, and then they dig over the users. All the stuff's redacted. I'm not going to read through, but basically they're just going over the different users who access cloud gaming in, on PC in the UK and just other numbers here. But again, there's nothing there because it's all been taken away. And the same with the section under here. The proposed licensing remedy preserves and enhances the RCBs. And that just finishes it off here. As a result of the NVIDIA agreement, Activision content will already be on two cloud gaming services post-merger. The proposed content licensing remedy creates further RCBs, including for cloud gaming providers as a result of the absence of a licensing fee and consumers as a result of the increase in the number of cloud gaming providers, which will have access to PC games. So that's it. In terms of the cloud gaming side of things, it's almost, it's a shorter section, but they're just essentially saying the same things that they said in section three here which was quite a bit longer, but they talked about the, the 
consumer benefits to consumers and the distributors of mobile games. So it's just pretty much the same stuff here. Licensing out these games, making sure that they are on other people's services, on different cloud gaming services, and making sure that it is enforced by third parties so that they can go back and forth and make sure that they are following through with their agreement. And it will should be easy for these third parties to know when Microsoft is not following through with the agreement because the terms aren't going to be difficult. But one of the things here, like they have, it seems like they're, they're downplaying cloud gaming as of right now, which I mean, it isn't nearly as big as the other sections of gaming, but in 10 years from now, it may be bigger or just as big. And one of the biggest parts of gaming, if internet continues to get better and there's more access out there and they're able to really improve latency and, and the overall quality of cloud gaming, maybe the the biggest growing part of gaming, especially if people are going to be able to play all these things on their mobile phones, you'll see a lot more people with like attachments and all of that type of stuff. But you never know that's going to be further on probably after the terms of these this deal has ended. But it really looks like Microsoft's wanting to just play ball and make sure that everyone gets access to these games, whatever they have to do, as long as this deal gets passed. But I'm going to leave it there, guys, and then we'll finish it off in the next video. And uh, we've gone through the entire response that Microsoft provided to the CMA remedies. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your support. And I'll catch you in the next video.